What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 16. A Hector Jimenez episode, who we'll talk about a little bit later. My name is Zach Graham, your host here on the North End Podcast, joined as always by my good buddy, on record as my best friend, it's Ian Michaud, aka E, aka Le E James. AKA Sebastian Grew Easy, AKA Easter Domus. E, how you doing? I'm doing well, ZG. Um, doing quite well. Hanging. Ready to and chat. We got some stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah. We we certainly do. Um, and again, you obviously we're in off season mode now, not just because Austin FC was bounced a week and a half ago, but because the MLS Cup final took place this past weekend so we'll talk about that the champions league draw which we kind of covered we covered a little bit last week uh that happened last night we're recording this tuesday evening um and some other austin fc like i told you last week that those those free agent moves the option decisions etc were going to come very quickly and they did come last night so we'll dive in to all of that plus uh some surprising distressing rumors hitting the Twitter sphere this afternoon uh, and talk about some plans for, uh, for some future fun here leading up to the world cup. But we'll, we'll talk first about this MLS cup because again, E like, I know you didn't watch it live. Um, I sat through it as much as I really didn't want to like watch LAFC play at all, much less, much less win the cup um, sat through it. And I'm glad I did because the game was fantastic and I know you just watched kind of the like 10 minute highlight that the league put out, but I thought like there's enough in that highlight to capture how wild that game was, how competitive, how fun, even as a third party viewing it. So just, just real quick, let's, let's recap that a little bit. Um, like we said last week, the two best teams in the league, I think uh, a little silly to, to argue against that. Obviously yeah. both number one seeds throughout the year. Um battling for the supporter shield right up until the last week or two and, and met in the final. Um, and so I thought it was uh, appropriate. I think we covered that a little bit last week that those two teams met in the final for, for the cup. Um, and there was a lot of scoring. It didn't, it didn't really start very fast. Uh, the game was open up and down right from kickoff, uh, but we didn't get, the first score until 27 minutes and free kick yep. for LAFC. And I guess uh, I should also mention uh, Bale was once again available on the bench, just like he was for the Austin FC uh, semifinal. To be honest, I don't know if he was available in that LA Galaxy game, but obviously we know he had not touched the field in the playoffs and uh, I don't think had been on the field for a while for this Los Angeles team. Was available off the bench. Chiellini went back to the bench. They started... Sebastian Ibiaga, Eddie Segura was still out on that back line. Um, and so here in the 27th minute, LAFC wins a free kick. They stand Carlos Vela and Kellen Acosta yes. over the ball just outside the box. And, and we know, um, obviously not from playing them, I think we'll get Philly on the schedule next year. And I'm excited to watch that matchup home or away. Um, obviously, Andre Blake, keeper of the year, I think three-time keeper of the year at this point. It just fantastic player and a legit mvp candidate it like to Mm -hmm. me he was that tier below uh driusi and and mokhtar um and i think it hurt philly that they had multiple mvp candidates like daniel gazdog was also deserving of of votes and some love and and being in the conversation so maybe those guys kind of took away from each other both you know being teammates and and being so solid throughout the year tough break for andre blake here though uh vela kind of fakes the shot and then kellen acosta comes in and the the wall jumps. Jack McGlynn, one of the younger uh, Philly prospects, academy players, you know, homegrown players, kind of, uh, you know, we talked last week about LAFC being um, not just a club, but an academy and a fan base to admire and to aspire to be. And, and we can learn a lot of things for sure, uh, from for them sure. because they do it well. Philly is is pretty much the exact same, especially with their academy, like, yeah. We could we could look up the list of just uh, awesome names that are overseas, Premier League, other leagues, MLS, you know, what have That's you. Awesome. Yep. Jack McGlynn jumps up 
And ball, not dissimilar to what Maxi Aruti saw coming straight at his face, <laughs> uh, you know, last week. And McGlynn just turns his face, ball deflects off his head, uh, and, and passed Andre Blake, who was, of course, going the direction of the ball before uh, it hit McGlynn in the head. So 1-0 LAFC. Uh, and I, I noted at the time, two weeks in a row that LAFC gets goals off opponents' faces. Yeah, uh, I don't know the the figures on that or how often <laughs> that is. The numbers, the figures. Uh, <laughs> but I remember I was on a walk the other day after uh, after our loss to LAFC, and I was just like, man, like, you know, how how many times in history has a dude come in and his first play a ball just hits him in the face and <laughs> puts in a really just like a deciding kind of goal? Yeah. Um, and then, wow, yeah, it happens again here. So uh, I don't know what they're teaching out there. And yeah. LA, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> and as as our as our buddy Twitter, the Poyo FC stand pointed out, sometimes better to be lucky than good. Uh, I think sure? that you know <laughs> pretty much encapsulates it. And and for LAFC, uh, any LAFC fans that may be listening, don't take that as a knock. You are both lucky and yeah, good. Was going to say, I was also <laughs> going to say, like, it, but it's best to be both. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which which they were. Uh, at, at multiple points throughout this season and these playoffs. Um, go into halftime 1-0, come out uh, about 15 minutes. Again, the game was just still wide open, many chances for both teams, back and forth. 59th minute, um, I think there was a free kick that began this play. Uh, a lot of these goals were scored off free kicks or, or yep. recycled balls off offset pieces, yep. what have That's you. Cool. And this one ends up where Jose Martinez – uh takes a shot from like johan valencia range right? like that's like what that we're far out. range now yeah. <laughs> guy takes one shot from out yeah. there the whole season <laughs> it's now the johan valencia territory you know we get for anybody who didn't watch the match you just try to 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 give them a, a baseline right <laughs> of of yeah. how they can visualize these things i don't um, know I, after after the beating L, uh, austin fc took we took a much worse beating on MLS Reddit than we did versus LAFC. Yeah. We took <laughs> a pretty severe beating versus LAFC. <laughs> we got to be careful true. with the, you know, we can't be dubbing Valencia the Steph Curry of, oh, no. of MLS quite yet. I don't know who would we call it. Like, I, I mean, the first Rudy. candidate that comes to mind for me is Rui Diaz from his fucking, oh. he actually made his. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I, I kid, I, but if we were going to like sincerely compare, Valencia's he has I think had two long drives at the net one more realistic than the other in terms of how it turned out but Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw Rudy Gobert attempt a three the other night that's maybe a better comparison for Valencia (laughs) from 40 yards (laughs) anyways uh (laughs) that seems a bit unfair that maybe (laughs) this Martinez shot though unlike Valencia this Mm -hmm. shot is completely on the ground yep and uh, again, after the recycled ball, there was uh, both LAFC pushing their back line forward um, and the, the union players kind of jogging to, to get back on side. And I don't remember the defender who was at the bottom of the screen from the broadcast angle that kept Daniel Gazdag on side. But this this shot comes screaming in on the ground. Yep. And Gazdag has just literally just gotten back on side and a terrific bit of skill. To just sure. like stop the ball on his right foot, turns one dribble, puts it past Maxine Crapo, equalizes. Um, that was, I mean, again, like Guys Dog, MVP candidate, uh, even though he wasn't, you know, in most of our conversations, he showed it right there. I thought, I thought it was a fantastic goal, kind of making something out yeah. of nothing. I mean, what a just an incredible turn to catch that ball on his foot there. Yeah. And then just precision, great strike. Yeah, that was a great yeah, game. Yeah. Was under under game control, and didn't didn't let the moment, the opportunity, get the better of him. We've seen plenty of people, whether they're Austin FC players or or players on other teams, when you get a chance like that, kind of out of nowhere, sometimes you can you can freeze up, and and he certainly did not. For sure, jumping all the way to the eighty third minute. This is where it really got crazy. It got late. Yeah, eighty <laughs> third minute. Uh, of course, Vela still still on, taking all the crosses here for LAFC, and he whips in a cross from, from the right side. Again, second half 
uh, Andre Blake sitting there in front of the three, two, five, two. Uh, so tough to hear, tough to communicate to be sure. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and Mario just comes in. I mean, we know how giant he is in the context of a, of an MLS field and he yeah. just high points that ball for lack of a better term and, and buries it in the back of the net uh, off his head and, and 83rd minute, right? Like, I'm sitting there watching it live and I'm sure you're sitting like when you sat and watched the highlights, that goal goes in, in the 83rd, it's two, one. I think a lot of people thought it was over at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you look at the, if you're watching the highlight video, right. It's like there's six and a half minutes to go in a 10 minute video. It's like, Oh my God, like what, (laughs) what is to come? It was Uh, fast and furious. And it didn't take long uh, for Philly to equalize. Uh, They win a free kick on the left side. Um, 85th minute Wagner fires it in and Jack Elliott, who I believe is six, six he, center back. He looks large. Yes. He looked and, like a, he looked like a hooper. Yeah, he did. Right. And I was right? like, yeah, I was looking at him. I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. It's Christian Braun. Like, yeah, it does, uh, that's a good comparison there. Um, so Elliott flies in and not too dissimilar from what Mario just did on the other end. Um, yeah. Heads it past Craig Poe two, two in the 85th. Um, and we end up going going to extra time. Um, second year in a row that the MLS Cup final has gone to extra time. We love it. And uh, and another, another note on Jack Elliott, because he comes up here again uh, twice in extra time. We'll talk about Jack Elliott. I believe two other clubs uh, had his rights or he was, you know, playing for them academy or or with their senior team, what have you, and just passed on him. Right. And now wow. he's, he's like an all league type of guy. And, and that's really like almost every position on that Philly back line is, is just top tier. Um, so going into extra time, uh, first 15 minutes, quiet. The biggest, I think the biggest thing that happened in that first 15 minutes was bail comes on yeah. for his first minutes in, in, I think over a month um, and maybe longer and in his first playoff minutes. So mm-hmm. <laughs> 97th minute bail comes Insane. on and we, we get to the second, uh, period of extra time here and five minutes into that 110th minute um, you see Corey Burke who was a sub a forward for Philly came on I think he may have come on in the first period of extra time as well uh, may have been that second one but re- regardless Burke gets a, a run out just a breakaway him and the keeper and Cray Poe comes out uh, to try to slide and you know get that ball away in any way he can because yep. championship game yeah, most you're likely you're you're gonna yeah. get scored on one on the keeper, um, and they collide, and both guys get hurt. And Craig mm-hmm. Poe was in a much worse way because his leg was hanging in two pieces. That's um, not the way that legs are supposed no, to hang. No. no. Uh, so Craig Poe and and I feel terrible for him in this and obviously he, they still won the cup and he got to i think i saw him celebrating from his hospital bed on facetime with some of his teammates uh um, someone who just like shattered his leg he was insanely calm yeah absolutely i, I like, imagine it has to do with the adrenaline that happens when you get hurt that bad i'm and lucky enough and i'll knock on wood never taken an injury like that um nope. and i hope i never do but yeah that's a good point he was yeah. really like he was he was in pain at the start. And then it seemed like he was really focusing on the people around him and his teammates and like urging them, like, yeah. don't worry about me. Like go win. Like you got to finish this. Yeah. That was um, some gangster shit. And then, and then Corey Burke, I believe also got pulled off. Uh, he was hurt, but again, not, not uh, nothing broken. I don't think mm-hmm. for Burke uh, there. And he did come out. Uh, Chris Donovan replaced him 121st minute. Um and so you get to the 120th, obviously taking somebody off the field who has broken their leg <laughs> takes a while. Yeah. So you get to you get to the 120th minute, and there's nine minutes of extra time here. Uh, Insane. And, and, and both teams really needed every second of it because 124th minute, um, Philly wins a cross, uh, crosses it in, gets recycled back out. They keep possession, and, and mm-hmm. Kai Wagner again whips it in from the left side. And uh, or this was the right side because again they 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 switch sides in extra time, so this is from the right side off of Wagner cross gets cleared out not far enough. Philly stays on it. They find Wagner again on that right side. He whips it in, finds Jack Elliott's head again, and then his first attempt is stopped and kind of ping ponged around in front of the net. Um, yep. Let me remember uh, 
what the backup keeper's name was. John McCarthy. So okay. John McCarthy did a, a good job of stopping that first effort. He did. Um, but then, you know, it, it's just in the mixer there, and Elliot ends up uh, getting it past him, 3-2. Yeah. Uh, and I think I don't think I mentioned this a minute ago. Craig Poe got a red card uh, for his challenge on Burke. So LAFC down a man uh, mm-hmm. on the restart, and, and it took four minutes essentially for, for Philly to capitalize there. And at this point, it's – you know, we thought it was over before with the Mario goal. Now exactly. down a man, yeah. five minutes to go. Come on. Philly's legendary defense. Yep. This is over. <laughs> now, did they, did Philly have a lot of goals like this secondary kind of, um, or even like, uh, you know, two plays set off piece of a, goals and stuff. Two plays yeah. off of a set piece. Cause just from the highlights I saw, it looked like they had a substantial, I guess, what you could call offensive rebounds. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. The ball's bouncing around and they got dudes who get to it, or they got guys, you know. Was that some is that is that how they scored a lot of their goals this year? Is that because I mean it looked like they were all over the field with that? To be honest, I, I couldn't tell you like where they rank. Um, I'd okay. imagine yeah. like just off the top of our heads, right? It's probably near the top in almost every category, considering yeah. they led the league in goals. Um, but I know like early in the season it was a very different team. They were not scoring a ton. Um, I think they drew like nine games in a row or something near the <laughs> beginning of the season. Um, and then th- that scoring picked up. So yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Um, but it's certainly, you have to imagine, right. That they, this is not like, Oh, we're, we're doing something out of the ordinary here yeah. with how successful yeah. they were, uh, on those second chances, the second ball. So that's, good a, point. that's a good point. Um, again, everybody thinks the game is over, but You've never seen Gareth Bale on an yeah, MLS right. field in a final. Uh, and Philly unable to clear a ball off the left side in the 128th minute. Um, I forget who ended up getting the first touch on it, but Palacios runs from, you know, left back, runs down the left sideline and, and takes uh, almost like a little like handoff. You know, obviously mm-hmm. not with the hands, but like just a little touch and Palacios takes it and gets a step on the Philly defender there. I think it was Wagner back on the right. Wagner and McGlynn, I think, were the two that were over there. Um, or not not uh, McGlynn. He was off. Paxton Aronson, who just got signed, I believe, by a, a Bundesliga club, or they're going to transfer him oh, wow. to a Bundesliga club. Um, okay. I forget which one, but he has like $4 million. Um, Paxton Aronson was over there, and he's super young. And and uh, I saw some people, I think, who were breaking down the film uh, later in the uh, – like on Sunday or Saturday night or something. And they were talking about, yeah, maybe his inexperience over there kind of led to this last play. Palacios gets a step, sees Bale one-on-one with Jack Elliott, which is not a given. Like Jack, but Gareth Bale is going to have the matchup advantage in almost all facets against the majority of MLS players and center mm-hmm. backs. But, you know, 6'6", six, six, Jack Elliott, that's probably one of the best people to have to try to defend a Gareth Bale attempt. I would agree. But it did not matter. <laughs> Gareth Bale skies over him, buries it in the back of the net past Andre Blake. Pandemonium at the bank, 3-3 in the 128th minute, uh, mm-hmm. which is the latest goal in MLS history, uh, besting the Jack Elliott goal from four minutes prior. So uh, all shit. kinds of all kinds of records being set in this one. Just a fantastic game. I mentioned to you that I think that was probably, and again, I have much less of a, a, a bank to draw from, so to speak, on like soccer games that I've watched because it's not as extensive as, as probably almost all of our listeners. Yep. But that was the best soccer game I've ever seen it, in the context of like combining the actual play on the field, the back and forth and the result, and just like the overall, like it being a final, a yeah, winner takes. takes all. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we end up going to penalties. John McCarthy, the backup keeper, who I believe started, I believe was a homegrown for Philadelphia, you know, talking about that academy that they have there. Um, and played was on the union for, I believe, four seasons. And I think was out of MLS at least last year, maybe two years, signed as a free agent with LASC this year. And so, again, you talk about just the, the multiple storylines and narratives that happened coming into this game during the game and mm-hmm. then after the game, like insane. 
Yeah. LAFC ends up winning 3-0 on PKs. The first Philadelphia attempt, Daniel Gazdag unfortunately slipped and just skied it, had had no chance. And then Jose Martinez stutter steps his way uh, to just a, what was a poor attempt, and McCarthy gets his hands on it, and then yep. McCarthy blocks the second one as well, or the third one, I should say. And uh, LAFC missed their first one. I think Andre Blake uh, blocked that one. Uh, and then buried the next three. So three nil on PKs, LAFC takes it down. Um, and like it, it, you know, that it, it worked for them. They went all in this year. For uh, sure. Had yeah. won the shield before, never won the cup and, and they got both. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it makes the Gareth Bale signing all, all worth, all it, worth right? it. It was all <laughs> worth it. <laughs> I mean, he yeah. literally didn't have to do like the little bit that he did during the season didn't matter much. And, it doesn't matter now. Like you only needed him for this one moment. Yep. Yeah, for uh, sure. Um, my buddy Doug, who's the yeah. LAFC fan that we were talking about having on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he sent me this incredible picture of Bale scoring that header, and he's just in the top right corner, like watching. Oh, he's he's in the picture. Yeah, it's fucking. No sick. way. That's yeah. So I'll cool. send it to you. I'll send it. That's to That's awesome. It's super cool. Congrats to him. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, that's Hopefully, what I said to him. Uh, I remember I texted him uh, that night and just said, you know, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. well deserved. Um, mm-hmm. And hopefully you and I are in a picture like that someday with the MLS cup winning goal being scored right in front of the North end. Yeah. Uh, we'll take you know, that. We can dream. For sure. Uh, <laughs> so uh, just congrats again to LAFC, a, a great season. Congrats to Philly on a great season. I know that that was their fourth final. They still do not have a win. They don't have an MLS cup. So Oof. I don't, I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, you know, the only reason they lost last year, I don't know if you were aware of this, but they played NYCFC last year in the playoffs. And of course we were much closer to COVID and, and all the, the restrictions and things when somebody would catch it. Mm-hmm. They had 11 players, and I believe the vast majority of those guys, starters, that were in the COVID protocols and the league made them play the game. So they basically played with all backups and got beat last year in the playoffs. Um, Damn. So, yeah, and a- almost the perfect redemption story this year, but just right. coming up a little short. And, you know, when you lose to, to Gareth Bale and a team like that, yeah, there's nothing to hang your head about. I agree. Doesn't make it any easier. It was a bad day for Philadelphia sports. Oh God, yeah. And I saw somebody. The world. <laughs> I saw somebody say, "Now you got to spell Philly, just lowercase p h i, uppercase l l, lowercase y." Nice. Um, yeah, zinger right there. <laughs> um, well, that's enough. That's enough talk. We're twenty plus minutes in here, and we haven't really talked about Austin FC. So let's do that okay. now. We'll put twenty two in the rear view, and now looking ahead to twenty twenty three. Um, you know, again, we, we talked about last week that, that we were watching some of those other teams that were already out. Um, RSL was my example where like a week after they lost to Austin, they mm-hmm. had put out a press release talking about whose options they had picked up, who they declined, who was out of contract, et cetera. Correct. And so we get it uh, almost, uh, almost a week to the day. Um, but before they, I believe this was released before the, the, the press release for the for the options was the Jared Stroud trade to St. Louis City was made official. Correct. Um, so uh, we'll tell. Congrats again to Jared uh, yeah. on the move. Um, because I, I I think he's a player that he's not a bad player. He just didn't quite fit what Austin FC was trying to do, and and or I guess you could say Austin FC just brought in guys that do what he does a little bit better and are a little bit more established in yep. the league. Absolutely. Um, so we can't, I don't know if you want to say anything about it, but just, I, I, you know, I will never forget what he did for the club wins, losses or draws. Like, however, you know, things went while he was here, while he was on the pitch, while he wasn't on the pitch. Like he was never a guy that we saw any, um, discontent on the field, off the field with his playing time, his role, uh, he was always busting his ass out there. You always got good reports from Coach Wolf on his training. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we would have probably seen him a little bit more later in the season, especially when we were getting, you know, when those games were coming fast and furious and 
September and we were looking for answers. Like if the trade had not already been agreed to back in early August, I think we see him at least on the bench for a few games uh, down the yeah. stretch there. So um, that makes sense. I mean, we, we talked about it a while ago. I don't know which episode it was on, but uh, happy for him gets another opportunity, you know, and that's what he needs there. I don't know if I'll say I'll never forget Jared Stroud's contribution to the team, but that's not <laughs> Jared. Uh, I forget a lot of things. Um, yeah, that's, that's fair. So, you know, if someone reminds me, I'll be like, Hey, yeah, you know, he was there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, a, a, a true professional from the limited experience that, that we had with the dude and uh, wishing him the best and let's keep it rolling. Yeah. I think the, the, Obviously, I, I'm here to remind you of, you know, the important things here. Um, and I, I think what, what I'll remind you of is that Jared Stroud, um, where is it here? Jared Stroud, I believe, had our first uh, uh, assist in Colorado. It was his, I believe it was his cross that ended up okay. coming to Diego Fagundes for the first ever Austin FC goal in Austin FC's first ever win. So you can remember that. And if not, I'll remind you next year. I probably won't remember that one either, but. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, you, you, you will remember Jared Stroud when St. Louis city comes to Austin next year, they are the newest member of the Western conference. Mm -hmm. um, and Nash Nashville going back East. Uh, so I, that'll slow down that budding rivalry between Austin and Nashville. But uh St. Sure. coming in. That'll be fun. Uh, and I saw that their roster is, they got like 10 players already, two DPs already agreed. Um, nice. Roman Berkey, I think, who is was the Swiss keeper for a while and like a really, like a high level. Like, you know that name, right? Yeah, yes, for sure. What Wasn't he the keeper for like Dortmund a while ago? I think you might be right. Let me, uh, I'll, you know, we got the Google right in front of us. So, so Roman Berkey, uh, and I apologize if I'm butchering the, the last name, Swiss professional footballer uh, from 2014 to 18. He played for the Swiss national team. Yeah. Dortmund, June, 2015, made his formal debut for the team in August, 2015, kept 12 clean sheets for Dortmund in the league and made 33 appearances, 27 appearances with nine clean sheets the week or the year after that, excuse me, 2017-18, he became the first goalkeeper to keep five clean sheets in the first five Bundesliga games of the season. Wow. I mean, so this, you know, obviously... Um, yeah, that's nothing to scoff at. Oh, wow. So, and this is something I knew that St. Louis City had their next pro team already playing this past year. Mm -hmm. um, he's already there. He played four games for them. Um Damn. So that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, obviously not, not at the top of his game anymore, uh, but he came over from Dortmund, Dortmund until 2022. So that's a, that's a, a big signing and he's not a DP obviously. So um, I think St. Louis is going to come in with a competitive roster, not just because of, of that, but, but Jared Stroud as well. Ian. Well, we'll <laughs> never forget Jared Stroud, baby. <laughs> Uh, so the, the other moves then, oh, and I should say, uh, Austin got a, a hundred thousand in allocation money back for Jared Stroud, which I think is, is great business, right? Like he was an asset that was not being used, um, and to get a hundred thousand in allocation money to, to use towards bolstering some of our other positions, uh, yeah. seems that like a good like move. business. That's good business. Yeah. I know good business when I hear it. That is good. <laughs> yeah. That's good business right there. So then uh, all of the uh, other decisions uh, were released shortly after that. So contract options exercised on Brad Stuver and second round pick from last year, Charlie Asensio, who yep. spent the majority of the season uh, out there. Where was he? He was in, I want to say it was Charlotte, but it's not Charlotte. Somewhere in the Carolinas. I apologize, Charlie. I forget. I know he was a Charleston. Charleston, that's what it was. Um and doing well for that team. So Good. Um, options there. Stuver, no surprise, of course. Um, Love it. Options declined on Danny Hosen, Freddie Kleeman, Will Polisic, Andrew Tarbell, and Felipe Martins. 
Uh, and then oh. Washington Carrozo was not bought, so he was sent back to his parent club. So we appreciate Manchita uh, for his, you know, the one, that one clip, bicycle kick assist. He's got that highlight. And we've never we had this sick. we had this we had this little drop queued up for months. Yeah. And so since we can never use it again, here we go. This is what I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later, Manchita. Best of luck to him. Yeah. Um, and then Hector Jimenez is out of contract and mm-hmm. 34 years old. So I guess let's let's talk about this a little bit. No surprises on Stuver. Uh, and I assume that they will negotiate a contract extension and a raise for him at some point during this next season. Uh, yeah. Well deserved and and needed for Austin for how good he's been. Charlie Asensio, obviously, his option is as a second round pick. I assume extremely cheap. Um, but then th- they did include this quote in the release. It says, "For a number of players who have had their contract options decline." Conversations about returning to Austin FC in 2023 are still ongoing. Nice. So it says for a number of players. So it's not, I think we can start with Felipe yes. um, because reading his name on the uh, list of options that were declined was surprising to me. But I think like when you just sit and think about it for 10 more seconds, um, I thought about it again, like, like you and I tend to do in like NBA terms where like, most contract options, especially team options, are more lucrative for the player. Mm-hmm. And in Felipe's case, I don't, I don't personally think he made a case for earning more than the league minimum. Um, and again, it's not a knock on him. I just think the on-field product from him was just it was it was very yeah. mediocre at best. Um, yeah, I, I think we I, when we were listening to Moon Tower, um, mm-hmm. I don't know where the Spurs game. Yeah, yeah, last week. Uh, we just mentioned, you know, we, uh, obviously we would love to have him back, and but, you know, you, for the right price. Right. Which We're is not the minimum, in the business right? of not doing good business. <laughs> right, right, which yeah. I think, you know, Claudio has has proven so far. Um, yeah, I think we get him better uh, for the minimum again. That is more than, more than worth it. Um, a guy who – you get more out of in terms of the spirit of the team, uh, the yeah. culture, you know, the atmosphere. Also, you know, uh, not to be, you know, understate uh, what he brings to the field. You know, he, he he's a bit of an enforcer for us. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he's always willing to, you know, have a little chat with somebody, take a hard <laughs> foul. Uh, so, you know, those, those are all things that you, that you need uh, on a championship caliber team um so definitely would like to see him back for the right price yeah and i think and and again that price is i think yeah, very well, clearly the, the minimum so i mean but, like what, what, what market could he really have yeah i mean i i feel like he's a fan favorite here he, he he clearly has found you know a nice little place for himself i just don't know who would be willing to pay like you know some some More. sort of money that makes him go Oh well, that tops you know what I got going on here. Right, right, for sure. And and maybe it's maybe it's not even a, a pay raise. Maybe it's a role increase with one of these younger teams. But I I think I'm with you. Like I don't see that materializing for any team with like playoff aspirations. Like we're mm-hmm. Felipe Martins is going to come in and play a big role for us this year. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it you know that 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 quote says a number of players for sure are still having conversations. So. Yeah. Out of Danny Hosen, Freddie Kleeman, Will Pulisic, and Andrew Tarbell, obviously two of those being backup keepers, who do you think is the most likely to actually still be in conversation? Because I, I think the most likely to me is Danny Hosen. Isn't Jimenez in there too? Well, he's out of contract. So maybe he's still. But the, 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 the quote that I pulled specifically said, for the players who have had options declined. Okay. And Jimenez well, did not fit okay. that. So uh, I, I do think Jimenez may still be a guy that they bring back. Okay. Um, yeah, to me, it's Hosen. Yeah. Um, you know, he got he got his money in regard to being an MLS striker. Yeah. You know, he, he made a substantial amount of change these last two years. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he wants to come back on a team friendly friendly deal, mm-hmm. I think 
I think he's a good asset to have. Uh, you know, I've I've lobbied for him multiple times. It wasn't the right call over Moose, clearly. Sure. Um, but I think he is an asset to have on the team that, again, pays dividends at the right price. Yeah. And I, I agree. Um, I don't know what that price is. Again, like one yeah. of my things this offseason is learn more about the MLS salary cap and like not just mm-hmm. be using all the terms without really knowing what they mean or like how much space a team has, et cetera. But I agree. Like if he is our third, like I think one of him or Maxi Aruti are gone. Um, yeah, that, that might be the case for sure. But I, like, I mean, you can't. I don't. I don't think you can trust Moose to start. I agree. Well, and, and but and that's the thing is like Maxi is not out of contract. He's still on the mm-hmm. team. And so like I, I don't hate Danny Hosen being your third string striker. I think that's a luxury. I mean, I some agree. of the goals that he did score this year were fucking huge and yeah. really like skillful. Impressive, think, especially goals, that yeah. volley. Um. Again, I think it's just going to come down to the cap gymnastics of can we do what we need to at all the mm-hmm. other positions and still bring him back? Um, because he's getting up there too. Like he's a veteran. For sure. So so maybe he is okay with taking that pay cut, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, it's really going to come down to, you know, obviously we have to offer them some sort of competitive salary. Right. Uh, you know, but the, our selling point is going to be, hey, look at what we're building. We want you to be a part of this. Mm-hmm. We have a great fan base. We have a great atmosphere. Um, no income tax. That is also yeah. very mm-hmm. nice. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I do hope he comes back. And I think your third option is a fantastic place for Danny, who's in there, yeah. especially given our uh, now more advanced schedule next season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, more games. There's more games to play. It's going to be interesting, and obviously it's not the last time we're going to talk about the striker position over the offseason. Um, but I think, and, and I, I don't think it's crazy, too, that they might be negotiating with a Will Pulisic to be a third keeper. I think Tarbell's probably gone. Um, mm-hmm. But again, it's it's all, all about the price for me. Um, yeah. And Damian Loss, who's still under contract, again, like we brought that kid over from Fulham's academy i think or their second team something like that Mm -hmm. and so that kid clearly has talent and if he is even close to being ready to being a backup in the league then like maybe you do sign pulisic as the third super cheap i i don't know Um, i mean i've never seen pulisic play i the only thing neither have i (laughs) is he shares a last name with the other pulisic so uh, well i i think if if there was more we needed to know about him, we would know by now. Right. I agree. Yeah. No, he's, yeah, he's been around for a minute. Yeah. Uh, And I do think Freddie Kleeman, again, he tore his ACL early. He was out on loan as well. I think Birmingham and like first or second match for them uh, tore that knee up. Uh, And so as, as the guy who was very clearly the fifth center back on this roster coming off a torn ACL, it's probably bye-bye Freddie. Um, Yeah. That that's not a good, a good combination there. Yeah. And so um, there's 22 spots still taken on this roster. I believe it's a max of 30. Uh, those 22 spots, two keepers still under contract, Stuver and Loss, uh, eight defenders, Asensio, Cascante, Gabrielson, Gallagher, Keller, Kolmanich, Lima, and Romagna. Ten midfielders. Okay. Driussi, Fagundes, Finley, Pereira, Redis, Rigoni, Ring, Valencia, Wolf, and Tomas Pochettino. He's the return. Back. He's back. What? And and obviously we will uh, see how that plays out um, <laughs> because he might be on the team next year. <laughs> like if we can't sell him or loan him. So like, no. I mean, does that lay any more credence to like that he was a bad teammate? <sighs> I don't know, man. Like, I, I think at, at River, where he was this past year, right? Like, back home in Argentina, yeah. from what I remember look, when I looked at Poach's stats down there in his form, like, he was not playing well and, like, not playing a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. Like, what the I, hell I don't, did we do with him? That's, yeah. Where and would like, he play? 
So here's the thing for me. If they can buy him down, again, I, I haven't gone through my, my cap uh, salary cap training camp yet for the offseason, mm-hmm. but I imagine there's some way to restructure his contract where the DP tag comes off. And if that's the case, and again, the number is right for whatever Claudio is trying to do, I don't hate him being a guy off of our bench because the the culture is well established here now. It is a complete 180 from when he left and True. when he was here. True. So I think we have the pieces in place that could prevent him from really being a suck on the vibe for yep. so to speak. And 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 we know that the guy has talent. Like we didn't see a ton of it. Like it, mm-hmm. he was so good in the fucking preseason before 2021. And then again, like he scored two goals, both in the same game against Houston at home. Um, I don't know, man. Like, again, like you mentioned that extended schedule coming up this year, right? Yeah. Like Pochettino as your like fifth or sixth midfield, midfielder option. That doesn't sound terrible to me. I agree. And um, like you said, uh, our culture is vastly different. Yeah. And, you know, some guys, and this is, you know, really uh, across the board, any sort of sport. Some guys, if you're if your team's down, they they just fall in line and completely fall apart and yeah, shut it down. Team, you know, bring the team down even further. But if things are going well, those guys are also more likely to be you know up on the high, right? Well, and if he's one of those guys where you know we're winning games, um, then shit, yeah, your sixth your sixth guy off the bench. Um, again, we saw the depth that LAFC had this year. Mm-hmm. We saw that they were able to play what 30 fucking different guys, yeah, throughout the season or, yeah. or lineup, yeah, their sure. entire roster, right? You get yeah. 30 spots, uh, so you, you need it, um, especially for a team that lacks a, a dearth of talent, yeah, you know. So, uh, I agree again, if the price is right, we got to do good business here, man. <laughs> so uh again 20 senior spots 10 supplemental spots uh make up the 30 total roster spots our current supplementals are Asensio, Loss, Keller, Pereira and Wolf so there's three senior spots open five supplemental spots open uh and we know that supplemental spots can be used to grab guys like Felipe Martins he was in a supplemental spot last year so it's not like you're just like that list is all young academy yes. type guys or draft picks um, but you can get some, some really important veterans, uh, in those spots as well. So it's, it looks like it's going to be a really busy off season with signings, um, Let's hope so. and the like. So we'll be on the lookout for that. The last thing I wanted to touch on here, um, we know that, that Zon Coleman had showed up on the injury report before the RSL playoff game did not play and was seen on crutches with a knee wrap slash knee brace. Uh, mm-hmm. And the rumor on the street is a torn ACL. Shit. So bringing it back to Hector Jimenez being out of contract. If mm-hmm. Zanko Monich tore his ACL in October, that means the earliest we can expect him back is May, right? I think eight months is like pretty much the quickest ACL recovery we've seen for somebody, an athlete in any sport to come back and be anywhere close to like themselves Um, right adrian peterson comes to mind right yeah and that's like the shining example of when it's worked the best right like that was just that was the lord's work (laughs) right so i don't i don't i don't think we can count on that type of recovery from our boys on but yeah no i i agree uh the earliest would be may but if he's but if he's out man like We have three healthy fullbacks on the roster. One of them is Charlie Asensio, who I I don't think is ready for like a full-time role on the senior team. Um, I I do think we'll see some of him next year, and I think we'll probably see a lot of him on the next pro team, but it's Lima, it's Gallagher, and an injured Kolmanich. So like maybe maybe the Kolmanich injury causes them to bring Hector Jimenez back. But like, again, Jimenez is 34. He does not play the left. I don't think he's played any minutes on the left for us. I may be mistaken, but not that I can remember. So I think that's where like maybe our biggest signing needs to happen. Assuming we keep everybody else is like fullback 
and striker. I was, yeah, I'm going to echo what you're saying here. Obviously, we know our two areas of need on this roster is fullback and striker. Yeah. And now with the torn ACL, uh, if the rumors on the street are true, um, yeah, those are the two spots. And, I mean, mm-hmm. even if Zani's healthy, that, that was still a spot. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Where we sure. could use a little bit of a, an upgrade. A little upgrade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some so, more juice there. You know, uh, let's 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 hope for the best here. I hope I hope that they're willing to spend and go get some guys, and um, that's all we can really do. Yeah, one well, I I think it's a good. Uh, we'll see you again, like we mentioned last last time, pre court. Yeah. Don't be bluffing. You got to spend this money, man. And you you see it happen with LAFC. They, I mean. They, it's not, I'm not trying to take a dig at their club because I think they, like, they, they, it worked for them. They bought that title. And clearly you can build a team with that type of depth and just insane talent, uh, whether it's talent that you, you know, uh, got from over here or was homegrown, or you go and buy one of the best players of the last 20 years in Gareth Bale and, and, and not have him on a DP tag. Like, if those types of, Again, cap gymnastics can be done. Mm-hmm. Pre court, Claudio, Josh, get it done. Yeah, right. And I'm not saying that has to happen this year, but yeah. LAFC was in year five, so let's let's continue building towards that. And you know what's not going to fucking help that is Driussi moving to the Premier League. And wow. we can go ahead and talk about that right now. That's uh, how you're going to segue to that? Yeah, man. Just because... fucking veer left, break your sway bar. <laughs> you broke deep, your sway bar. That's a deep cut right there. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So about an hour and a half before we hit record on this episode. Uh, at, let me pull up the, the tweet because I want to credit the, the blue check. And I guess now that Elon's taken over, I don't know if this guy's official or not. He could have just paid $8, which, uh, you know. That's anyways, Nick, Nico Cantor, um, CBS sports, Galazzo, us football pod. So I, you know, 20,000 followers. I think this is a legit rumor here. He says there are three premier league teams interested in Austin FC's Sebastian Driussi, one of which is Leeds United per source. The ex river plate and ex Zenit scored 25 goals this season for Austin made MLS best 11 and is highly sought after from abroad maybe the worst news ever like in in history (laughs) no no bias there at all and you know i i don't know man like this makes me really fucking nervous really nervous because he's 26 years old so he's literally just entering his prime we Mm -hmm. saw that last year Mm -hmm. i imagine that for most soccer players the EPO is the fucking pinnacle. That is the mountaintop. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really like, obviously you'd rather play for one of those top clubs and, and not be fighting for relegation, which I think is probably the level of club like Leeds, et cetera, that are, are, are really considering Driussi. But like, I just don't see, like uh, he said a lot about, he's very comfortable here. He loves mm-hmm. it here. His fan, like he, he his family yeah. is safe. He doesn't have to worry about them, et cetera. But I don't know, man. Like it's different. I think when the Premier League comes calling, yeah. Shit, I also don't know. Um, again, <laughs> you know, you, they throw a large sum of money at him that they have means and access to. He, he has a very difficult decision to make. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, he's twenty six. Like that's you know that's just this huge part here that needs mm-hmm. to be really focused on is that he is not some aging star that, you know, just had a stellar year out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. He's clearly on the up and up. Um, yeah, that would be, that would set us back years. Yeah. Like yeah. It would, as a franchise that would set up, that would restart the start of this franchise. Yep. And I don't think like I don't know if we go back to being as shit as we were before he gets here, but Agreed. I think it's pretty darn close. Uh, but I mean, just a, a completely inconsequential team 
yeah. if we lose him. I mean, everything we do is centered yeah. around him. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, it would it would set the franchise back years. Um, I I don't know how you could replace a guy like that. Uh, I don't even really want to think about it too much. <laughs> Yeah, me either. But I think, you know, for now, this is a reality for us. Like, we need to start worrying about this. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't yeah. feel great. But, uh, you know, looking at, at his transfer market page, his market value has doubled since he got to Austin. Seven and a half mil when he transferred in, currently at 15 mil. Um, and I think that's probably like the only it's not a positive, but like the result of selling him, I would imagine it would be a pretty like substantial, you know, $15 million fee. Yeah. You can probably go get another really, 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 really good player. For sure. But But it's like, like, yeah. Does, does that player want to come to Austin? (laughs) Right. Is he going to be the fucking MVP of the, I mean, the shadow MVP of the league, right? Like, yeah. Uh, and why isn't why isn't Hanny Mukhtar getting EPO looks? That's what I want to fucking know. <laughs> why aren't you coming after the MVP of the MLS? EPL. Uh, Anyways, that was just yeah, not a great thing to see. Uh, and so, just fingers crossed, man, that that does not happen. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> and because you know it, it, it would suck in the MLS, it would also suck. In our first go round in the Concacaf Champions League, because we do know our first <laughs> opponent here, and not having Driusi would would certainly uh, dampen our our already slim chances of making a deep run in this tournament. But um, again, the draw happened last night, uh, mm-hmm. and Austin will, will play Violet FC, and that's the team out of Haiti. Um, that will be the round of sixteen. So so two legs. And some interesting uh, stuff revolving around the teams from Haiti because yeah, last right. year uh, the New England Revolution were matched up with the team from Haiti, and this was Cavalry. And again, I'm probably butchering that name, but that club ended up forfeiting the first round due to visa issues. Um, couldn't Ooh. get visas for the players to come play here. Um and I, I, I also uh, read and then heard on, on Moon Tower today that apparently the, if we do play the away leg, it is probably going to be in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, no, um, you can't play in Haiti. Yeah. Not um, right now. Not yes. that it was – yeah, yeah. No, you cannot play in Haiti right now. And they haven't – They uh, Violette has not played since May. And I believe that was when they won the Caribbean Championship to clinch this spot. Yeah. Um, so I, I really hope that it happens. I don't want to advance on forfeit. Like, I think that would really suck. <laughs> and again, like, if you want to go into the MLS subreddit on me Monday, you're going to probably see some shit about that <laughs> come March if that does come to pass. But um, yeah, that would suck. Again, like, I just want the, uh, I want the experience for our guys. I want the notoriety for the club of, of being in this tournament in our second or after only two years of play um, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of MLS teams that have not made this tournament. Um, Yeah. And it's kind of like the last, the last wisp of our successful second season is going to be competing in this, in this tournament. So um, I guess here's, here's my one question for you about this before we move on. We, we touched a little bit on this previously you know we we're always going to have the u.s open cup that's a guaranteed game right now we've got the league's cup in july and august guaranteed two matches out of the three extra tournaments that we have those two in Concacaf champions league how do you think we should approach these tournaments because i don't again i think we both agree we're not deep enough to make deep runs certainly in all of them and maybe not in any of them Mm-hmm. But is there a way that you would prioritize attack, attacking these tournaments while we're in league play? Um, Open Cup is – that's the one that has – that we played as uh, San Antonio. San Antonio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that one I would let our young guys play. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd let our academy dudes run. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't pay much credence to it if they can like advance, get a game here or whatever. And, you know, you find yourself in the position 
maybe you go for it. But I, I, I really don't give a shit too much about that. Um, yeah. The CONCACAF one, I, I, it, you get those guys that run, that experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let them play in that game. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how we match up against this team versus uh, from this team versus uh, from Haiti. Um, but I, I, I'd have to assume that's a winnable game. I would think so. Right. I, I, I don't know how, I, I mean, I don't know how premier the Haitian league is, um, right. but, uh, yeah, I think that's a winnable game. That would be the one that I would place the most emphasis on. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we agree on that because I think the U S open cup, you just completely punt like at yeah. least the first two games. Because we're always going to have that. It happens every single year. Yeah. And I I think that like Leagues Cup, I'll decide what I feel like the team should do when we get closer to July. Um, mm-hmm. but like like you said, I'm I'm glad we're I'm glad we're on the same page here because I think you just you go all out for the Champions League because in all likelihood, I think we end up and there's Wemby chiming in he also wants uh he also wants to go after the champions league um i just think you you go after it you see you're you're probably not going to make once you meet a league mx team we're probably going out yeah so yeah i think i'm i'm just right there with you like you throw everything you can at the champions league it's early in the season Mm -hmm. we should mostly be healthy and that's again like it's the most important tournament out of the three so I just think that's – I think we should just cast aside the worries. And, we'll like, if we make a deep run in CONCACAF Champions League, yeah, it's great. So, like, I just I just don't think there's any downside to going after that one and punting the others. I agree. And they should bring us on to consult the team. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think that's probably going to do it for us on this episode. Oh, one more thing, E. Oh. Uh, I did want – talk about this uh just kind of preview it we'll 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 release this full idea and bracket after our next episode or when we post our next episode but but here's what we're going to do leading up to the world cup and now that we're we're out of the 2022 season as 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 i think most people maybe they don't but a lot of people know austin fc including playoff goals scored a very nice 69 goals this season um Mm. And, you know, with, with the CONCACAF bracket coming out, the World Cup bracket to be set after the group stage, and our love for basketball and, and March Madness, uh, oh. what we're going to do is we're going to have a full March Madness style bracket okay. with 68 of the 69 goals. We're going to take out Musa Jite's own goal from the first game. So that's the 69th goal. is very nice. Okay. And and that's not in there. So but we've got our first Perfect. quarter. Right, and yeah. then we've got our four uh, uh, regions of sixteen mm-hmm. goals, and uh, we're going to seed the teams. Okay, or, and not the teams, the the goals. Yep. Uh, but then the winners are going to be chosen by our listeners via Twitter poll. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of Twitter polls flooding your timeline once we start this, but uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to be able to see uh, where everybody stands on these goals, and and it'll be fun to kind of maybe hear from some people about why certain goals were special to them or what they remember For about sure. that, that moment or that game or where they were. Um, so I think that'll be, it'd be fun to do that over uh, the course of a week or two, you know, all of us are tuned in to the world cup. Um, so, so again, starting next Tuesday morning after our next pod, we'll, we'll reveal the bracket on the pod and our, our methodology. Cause there will be some science involved here. Of course, of course. you know how we do it. Uh, and then, we'll, and then we'll let everybody, decide from there what was the best austin fc goal of the 2022 season so i I think that'll be a lot of fun yeah that sounds awesome that's a great idea so we look forward to that and and as always we appreciate you tuning in sticking with us through this pod almost an hour here on this tuesday november 8th uh and we'll, we'll be back next monday uh talking austin fc talking the bracket and hopefully like a rebuttal to the, the Driussi rumors that, that that's bullshit and it's not going to happen. So, uh, you know, yeah, let's hope not. I, I, we can't, we can't end the show on that, man. Okay, well, <laughs> We can't. Well, I don't know how else 
to end it, it, it is what it is, man. When you're a good team, you're going to have rumors like that, right? Okay, um, yeah. We, we can end it with you got 13 minutes to go vote. You got 13 minutes to go vote. <laughs> I hope everybody either voted early or voted today. If you're still in line, you won't hear this until after the polls have closed, but I hope you stay in line and get your vote counted because uh, that is one of the most important things we can do as, as trivial and as, as small as it may seem as an individual every vote does count. So uh, ending on a good note, democracy, hopefully mm-hmm. that's still around. Good in the segue future. to the bracket too. Yeah, voting. To the bracket. yeah, voting. Yeah. Yeah. You get those voting fingers. You got them warmed up on yeah. November 8th. You keep them warm yep. for the gold bracket. So for Ian, I'm Zach. You follow the pod, rate, review, subscribe, hit that thumbs up wherever you're watching as my dog Wimby attacks me to end the pod here. That's a good vibe for E. I'm Zach. Until next time, everybody. Vamos Austin FC. Goodbye.